gets back. Yes? <laughs> because well, did you get already given the vaccine? No. Yes, I definitely <laughs>
want to just take your um, yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what, I'm going to give you this, <laughs> otherwise I need parts of me all over the place. Thank you everyone for making it out this afternoon. My name is Michelle Corbett. I'm the director of marketing here at the Marion Community College. And I wanted to welcome you on behalf of Dr. Abel Reno, our president, who wasn't able to be here with us today. Um, but he sends his regards. So as the director of marketing, I am out in the community a lot, working with high school students. And just this last week, we were out at Madera High and Madera South at Liberty all day helping students register for their community college classes. And I have to tell you that the future is bright. That I just, so many students were excited about coming to Madera Community College. I had one young man ask me, he said, so our school tomorrow is going to be doing this thing where all the students walk across the stage when they're going to be going to a four-year college and they celebrate like what school they're going to go to. Should we be going out there for Madera? They said we could. I'm like, of course you could. You have to make sure that everyone knows we now have a college in Madera County and we can live out things like, yeah, I'm going to represent and make sure that, that everyone knows that we're here and we're here to serve the community. And so we're really glad to have you. Um, we are a part of this community and we're proud to have the community coming onto our campus and we're proud to be out in the community engaging with folks. And so it was um, when this opportunity came up to celebrate the mural and the artists. It was a no-brainer to, to make sure that this event happened. And so, on behalf of the Air Community College, welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Juliana Franco, and I have the privilege of being your mistress of ceremony today. I'm so excited to be back in my alma mater. Um, you know, many, many years ago, I never thought college was a place for someone like me to go to. You know, my parents were immigrants, and at that time, I didn't have any residency here in the States. And um, it just so happens that Mr. Phil Gonzalez was my counselor. And he said, you know, Juliana, we can make it happen if you'd like to go to college. Would you like to go to college? And I remember that day, um, my future looked bright. And I am forever thankful and grateful for our educators in our system that empower us to think beyond our wildest dreams, to empower us to know that there is life outside of high school and that we have an impact to make. And he has forever impacted my life, and I'm sure he will impact your life today as he shows and talks about the mural and it brings up our culture of community and everything that it means to go back in time where, you know, paintings could represent what we're going through. And it's something that is in history, but not only do we want to keep it in history, we want to bring it back to life. So today we have an eventful program for you, and I have the privilege and great honor to not only introduce my, my great mentor, and he still mentors me, it doesn't matter how old I get, he said, Julia, I have not seen you in the community. Community, what are you doing? to further your community. Juliana, I have not seen you mentoring anybody lately. Who are you mentoring? So I have a great privilege and honor to introduce the man of the hour, the individual that has worked tirelessly to put this program together, Mr. Bill Gonzalez. Yes. Introduction from the public uh, broadcasting system, and they have a four part series called The History of the Chicago Movement. And so, this introduction uh, is just very good. It's only one minute long, so hang on.
today uh, <clears throat> is my honor. <clears throat> I respectfully want to acknowledge and recognize these two Tagano muralists, artists, for their contribution to Tagano art and the Tagano movement, part of our American history. Uh, on the first slide, uh, to my right, is Ezekiel Lee Corona. And on the other slide, um, right, you see on the left, is Ernesto Palomino. And both of these gentlemen are here today. Um, Ezekiel Lee is going to speak with us about some of his thoughts, some of his memories, and some of his uh, ideas about uh, the mural. So, um, really, it's about these two gentlemen and, and this mural. Uh, when uh, I started on this project a number of years ago, uh, I was desperately seeking a very clear, uh, nice, colored photograph that someone had taken of this that would really give an emphasis to all the detail that is in this mural, that, um, that was in this mural, I should say, so it's, it's no longer. And so, unfortunately, uh, at that point, I was never able to get a, what we call a clear shot. And uh, even without cars in front of it, I wasn't able to get a clear shot. So this particular freeze frame is exactly that. It's a freeze frame made from an original VHS 1977 news broadcast that was what they call uh, burned into a DVD and then frozen. One, one frame. And so that's why you see blur, that's why it's not real clear. But at the time when I was doing this project, this is really the best whole color picture of the whole mural that I could have come up with. So I had uh, two of these made. So perhaps afterwards, uh, you may be able to get, get up close and take a look at them. Uh, this picture was taken in 19, about 1996, and uh, unfortunately, the building, the wall, the ceiling had fallen in, and uh, there was their redevelopment agency was looking to possibly restore the building, and uh, at the time in 1996, the cost was about a million dollars to restore it, and that was uh, seen as too much money, so. Um, so the building was slated for demolish, demolition, and so the good thing that the Madera Redevelopment Agency at least began taking pictures of the process before it was actually demolished. So uh, here you see a, a very weathered 24-year-old uh, or so mural that has an east face. So that means that up until noon time for 24 years, it was getting full Madera sun. And uh, that's what the sun will do to a mural if it's not restored and maintained. So part of the reason for doing this was, uh, it, it's always been my um, thought. And I thought there was um, probably a need to verify this and to validate this. That there's evidence that this mural, when it was painted at the time, was actually a motivation it was an inspiration to others, and it provided, um, for nothing else, uh, for lack of a better word, I, I use the term ganas, for people to, to want to um, be part of their community, to, to be empowered. And so uh, I came up with, with some things that I'm going to try to validate as we go through the process today. Uh, and then so and me will collaborate to paint the mural. Uh, Amin, the Association of Mexican American Educators, they're represented here today. Uh, would, would be involved in the educational system, in our school system, and uh, begin advocating for the improvement of all students. And the United Farm Workers, which uh, was active statewide, also came through uh, our town and actually established an office here. Please. Uh, it, it certainly is worthy to give acknowledgement to um, the Madera Theater because it was a center point of the community uh, when it was uh, centered there on the 70th Eastern. And I'm sure, certain that if you showed high school students today this picture, 
they probably wouldn't recognize the corner. And uh, it's kind of sad, but they also may not be aware that on the side of the building was that mural. So there's a, a multi-purpose in bringing back this historic um, memory of this building. When I was meeting with uh, Jim Taper, he used to be the director of the Madera Redevelopment Agency, he said, oh, Phil, when we announced we were going to tear that building down, I can't tell you how many phone calls that I got that says, oh, I want to buy two of the chairs that were in there. And that was my first day. Somebody else was, I want to buy one of the you know chairs. And he goes, you know, probably could have made a million dollars selling just the chairs. So you know, he, he was joking, right? But he goes, I couldn't believe how many people called him and said, oh, you can't knock that down. You know, that was my first day. And I ended up marrying my wife there. And, you know, just all kinds of things. So, uh, Madera Theater has a history. It actually burned down in 1940, was rebuilt a, a year later, uh, basically the same building, and that's that's the building that is pictured here. So, um, if you go down and hit the top on that, it's going to go back. So, my friends helped me film, it, film this. It's, four, it's like three seconds long, right? <laughs> I just wanted to show that this is, this is the building that stared out, so security. So, um, the, uh, again, now the, your, the students nowadays would recognize this that's there, and not knowing that there was a theater that was, you know, where people went to the movies and so forth. So, uh, jokingly, when I asked what Fred did, they said, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll meet you on Sunday morning at 6 and do this, and I'm going, okay. But, but the um, the Derrick Theater was a landmark, and a lot of people, you know, knew that, that you know that was like the center of town at that time. So here's some facts um, that the Chicano movement probably you, you, there's an argument that it started in the late 1960s and. Uh, Los Angeles area that I know for me in 1968, being part of the, the walkouts that happened there, um, it would spill over into the early 1970s. And in the early 1971, Ernesto and Lee would actually paint a first mural in Fresno, California, and it was on um, F and Tulare Street. Does that sound right? F Street, Tulare Street. It's it's what they call Barrio Chino, uh, Barrio Chino's Chinatown. And um, it, it was on a liquor store, and it was there for many, many years, and finally the building was demolished. But they will paint a, a mural in Madera that, um, as much as I can figure out, was uh, one of the largest Chicano murals for that time, being done in 1972. Um, Lee, who's going to speak to you later, He's going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, idiosyncrasies related to that, that mural. Uh, in a course that I teach at Fresno State, we, uh, we use a book called Chicano Folklore. And in that book, it talks about um, Muralismo, mural art, Chicano mural art, very, very indicative and reflects um, art from the Mexican mural movement, which was Diego Rivera, um, was, uh, Daniel, excuse me, David Alfaro Siqueiros, and Jose Clemente Orozco, those tres grandes, the three great ones, the three masters, is what, how they're referred to. And when you look at the Mexican mural movement, it had uh, many, many different symbols, motifs, uh, characterizations of the many different kinds of peoples in Mexico, those that were indigenous and those that were more reflective of uh, the Spanish Castilian. So in, in murals that we saw here in the Chicano movement, we would see uh, motifs, symbols that are reflective from that time, from the, the, the Maya, from the Aztecas, 
from some of the other indigenous groups of uh, Mesoamerica. And then we're going to see those motifs um, be utilized by organizations here. And, and Ame will be one of those that we'll see where they've incorporated that into their mission. So uh, part of the process when you're doing any kind of research and documentation is to look at the local newspapers and the local magazines and um, research whatever particular documentation was going on at the time. And here is um, a mural, an article in the Madera Tribune when it's almost finished. And um, it, it was interesting. I wanted to add this in here because I'm hoping at some point that uh, we, we get that clear shot. We may have um, we may have some news about that today. I, I found out last night, <laughs> or fortunately, please. So um, we can see here, this was taken by the Madera Redevelopment Agency. You can see the, the very, very serious deterioration. Um, if you were to look over the wall, there, there actually was no roof on the other side. The roof had already fallen in. But you can still see uh, the R, A, Z, A kind of in, in the mural. And again, Lee, when he talks about this, is going to tell us a little bit more about some of the representations that were there that we visually can't see at this point. OK, so um, I, I had the, the opportunity to, to interview Lee and uh, excuse me, Ernesto, and we, we, I went to his studio, and he uh, told me about many of the things related to the mural that he experienced, and, and we're, we're talking, you know, primary research firsthand, I was there, this is kind of what happened, and kind of, you know, sharing with me his story, his view of how he, he saw things, and so uh, after that, um, I realized that, wow, I had really that it was really kind of special. I felt I felt special because he had shared with me, you know, some of his personal thoughts about uh, about doing this project and how um, at the time there there was no guideline for this. It was like if you felt like putting some art up in a public space, then you did it, and that's what he did. Please. Okay, so. Um, Lee, I haven't known very long, but I feel like I've known him all my life. And we, we discussed that actually yesterday, how we, I met him uh, when there was a celebration of three other murals in Delray, California. And so we're standing in front of one of them. And I don't know if you can see kind of in the back there in the purple, it, it says, si se, si se puede, that's another mural. And then directly across from us, in this alley, because it was done in an alleyway, was another mural that was a reproduction of a mural that I'll show later on in the PowerPoint. But um, one of my friends at this event says, oh, you know, you know that project you're working on in Madeira? Yeah, well, Lee's here. And Leo, we not here. So he, when he pointed it out, he knew what he looked like. So I said, well, yeah, you go there. So I, I go up and I, I <laughs> heard Lee turned around and like, who the heck are you? Uh, that was kind of the look I got. It was a good look. I mean, it, was a, it was a welcome look. And uh, I just said, you know, I've been working on this project. And, you know, I'd like to talk to you about it. I'd like you to, you know, be a part of this. And um, here we are, and there he is. So um, we've, uh, we've you know, developed a, a very, very good relationship and friendship. Okay, so um, here's some more facts. And uh, Lee, again, will talk a little bit about um, the Planning Commission meeting. Uh, I have asked him to maybe elaborate a little bit on that. And uh, they used 50 gallons of paint. Okay, so I know we, we now know how much a gallon of paint is. Uh, at this time, they, um, in an earlier slide, uh, highlighted that they, um, they got a donation of $300 for paint, and if, if, in today's money, that would be about $2,000. So that, that would buy you a significant amount of paint. So they had a community that was behind what, what the, they were 
were representing in terms of what they wanted to do. Um, they also got a number of signatures to support this. And um, we were also noting this last night. And I, again, I was able to, to sit down and have dinner with um, his daughter and his family last night. And uh, I said, you know, one of the things uh, about this mural is there was no vandalism on it. Nobody went and put their, what we call, put their, like spray painted their name on it or Madeira Vipa or anything like that. You didn't see that vandalism. And that really is a sign of respect when a community that maybe has tagging and graffiti going on in other parts of the city, but they left that wall alone. And that's a real, real indicator of, of respect. Uh, yeah, one more time. Uh, so I, I, I'm willing to, to say this with the research that I've done over the years. Based on a research, the Badera Rasa mural was the largest town mural on a permanent building in the San Joaquin Valley in 1972. Uh, a little over 30 feet high and the best mathematical guess is about 48 feet wide. And that's why counting the things on the sideline and the measurement of cars. So, um, there, there's history here in Madeira, and I think that's significant. That this history is here; uh, it needs to be brought forward. I think students in this community uh, need to be aware of this, and I think it's uh, important. That that's why I'm doing this. So, uh, this particular mural has actually been demolished, but it's been reproduced in a courtyard, uh, and it's called the Sad Courtyard. It's on Fulton Avenue in Fresno. It's absolutely beautiful. It, it pops out at you with all the colors. But this is, uh, again, this is going to be talked about a little bit later uh, by uh, both Ernesto and me uh, in, in a video that we do. So um, this is more, I'll talk a little bit more about this later. So I mentioned that I thought Ame was kind of a result of part of the impetus we developed with this mural or, or garnered by this mural. And so if you look at the Ame logo, Association of Mexican American Educators, and it has many chapters throughout the state. And at the time in 1971, there was not a chapter. In 1972, there was not a chapter. But in 1973, they formed a chapter, began to form a chapter, and will actually be chartered a year later. In 74. And I think the mural had something to do with this, with the idea that educators in the community felt empowered, perhaps felt a responsibility to uh, do something within the education system. So um, if you were to do some research about El Fuego Nuevo, and go look at what the uh, Aztecs, the purpose of that, their, their equivalent of what we call our calendar had a, a cycle of 52 years. And every 52 years, they would um, look to the spirits, look for guidance, and uh, they would uh, look for the, the, what they called a new fire, or El Fuego Nuevo. And so they, in many cases, would destroy things that were part of the past, and then they would move forward. And so part of um, one of the rituals with that um, Ame still does is to celebrate the concept of how important it is to keep this new fire going uh, and working towards uh, continued uh, improvement within education. So uh, this is actually their original charter. And I remember when I went to uh, the Ame meeting and I asked uh, for them to be a part of, of sponsoring this activity, um, I felt it was important that um, that, that I get a picture of this and include it because it represents, again, those symbolic motifs that were talked about that we saw in Chicano murals. But here we see it on a charter for a nonprofit organization that's working within the educational system. So um, I thank you for, for you know, finding this and making it part of this. Uh, there are two people on here that were in part of this organization that were uh, important educators, uh, Manuel Villalobos president, and Debbie Alabama, Alabama uh, was the first secretary. So their names are here. Uh, it's 12, 14, 74, and again, you can see it's a long time ago. However, uh, again, impactful, related to what was going on within the educational. Um, also, 
Uh, the Madera Tribune is going to be affected. Uh, they were traditionally an English-only paper. However, we'll see in the mid-1970s, uh, they started printing articles uh, in Spanish because they needed to serve a, a community that uh, had those needs. So, uh, again, I thought this awareness was really important and acknowledged that even the Madera Tribune was saying, hey, we need to meet the needs of our community. We found this article related to, again, also in the Tribune, uh, talking about United Farm Workers. And this was when they were on uh, what was called the Thousand Mile Mark Walk. And uh, it was to bring awareness to the farm workers uh, at the time uh, that this happened. I was a student, student at Long Beach State. And uh, part of our focus uh, being involved in the Mecha Club. And the Mecha is Movimiento Estudiantil Chicano Seatuan, the student movement of Atuan. And basically, that organization was working, again, towards uh, getting students to come to college, uh, working within the community for um, the embedderment of the community. I work at what was called the East Side, uh, the East Side. Side of East Long Beach Neighborhood Center. Is that, is that East Long Beach Neighborhood Center. Yeah, my wife is here. She was she was stood by my side. All of this. Um, but here we see United Farm Workers again marching through um, basically a very conservative Madera at this point. And um, a small group, however, they represented, walked through, and we'll see just a few days later. Uh, the United Farm Workers would open an, uh, open an office in the city of Madera. And again, part of this process of uh, empowerment that I think the mural had something to do with. So when Lee and I took that picture uh, in Del Rey, opposite of us was a mural reproduction of this mural that was painted on um, three four by eight foot plywood boards. The painter of this was Antonio Bernat, and he actually painted this and then three other sections that were also four by eight on five boards, and they would serve as the backdrop for Teatro Campesino, because at a, at a time, in 1968, the Teatro Campesino was centered in Delray, California. They would later move to San Juan Batista, but they used to meet there, practice there, and so this, this was painted as one of their backdrops. It was portable. Um, when uh, the Echo Campesino moved, the, these panels stayed behind. And then they got mounted on a building, which was across the street from the post office, present day. That building is still there. However, these very badly deteriorated are inside that building. And uh, we've actually sought to, in, uh, sitting in the front row here, Eddie Varela has been part of trying to uh, get those out and let's take pictures of them. Let's preserve them, let's restore them. However, the, the person that's gardening them right now hasn't quite come over to, to be able to let us do that yet. So, uh, guess what? Another potential project. Mm -hmm. So, one of the reasons that uh, I'm doing this is I, I think it's very important to, to what I call tell your own story. And um, if, if we uh, don't tell our story, then we are what we call, there's a term, there's an anthropological and sociological term. It's called a historic. And that means you, you don't have a history. Uh, so if we don't write our history, if we don't make an, an attempt to garner and write down and document, uh, interview, um, get photos, um, then we will be without that history. So part of my uh, process was to, um, to, again, garner this history here. Uh, we need to recognize the significance of these two individuals because at the time, they were really risking a lot by trying to do this mural and, and going into a town and um, saying, hey, we want to put a mural up the side of the building. Um, and the others, we need to realize that that mural had impact on other things that happened within the time frame in the education system, uh, the newspaper, and the community system, as well as uh, supporting the United Farm Workers as they were walking through um, the 
there. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, there's a lot of people to, to uh, acknowledge here. And obviously our two artists are here today, but um, there's, a, there's a, a story that some of the stories that I'll tell a little bit later. Uh, but uh, Dr. Avamiera from Army, I thank you. Uh, Madera Tribune, when I went to go uh, do the documentation there, uh, they made it very easy. They said, hey, we have a big work room. Uh, you can work here. You can spread these things out. We'll help you move the, the big folders of the newspapers back and forth. Uh, they were very, very actually welcoming. Uh, the Madera the Development Agency also opened the doors. They gave me a work room. Uh, they said, here, you can use this as your office. If you need copies, tell us. We'll make the copies for you. So when you're working on a project, and, and, uh, and that happens, it, uh, it, makes, it makes you think that, OK, I, I'm, I'm going in the right direction here because uh, somebody else is, is, is being supportive of this. Um, the textbook that you saw. And then um, I'm going to refer to the article in Voices that was part of your program. I'll, I'll refer to that a little bit later. But I also used one of the pictures from uh, a book called Mexican American Artists by Ancito Pirarte, and that featured the, um, the mural that uh, Ernesto and Lee did in Fresno, California. And then I have a lot of other people that can read you. I wanted to, I mean, I'm not here, uh, with this, the assistant to the president. She's been very, very helpful. Juliana was very nice to say uh, that she would be part of this. Um, Bulldog Cream helped me with some of the big posters. Uh, Ricardo and his crew are, are filming this right now. And hopefully we turn this into uh, a video that's usable over and over again. Um, Dr. Reyna, I wish he was here. He's actually um, trying to get some grant money at a conference in San Diego. So um, I hope he be successful. Uh, the mayor is here. With us. We'll speak with you later. Uh, the senator, Ana Caballero, is here. Thank you. I want to say thank you to my wife. She did the program. And uh, she's always been uh, the supporter, but she's also been uh, the one with a very critical eye to make sure that the T's and I's are all crossed <laughs> and dotted and uh -huh. all those other things, right? And then Joseph for the program design. And uh, I'm going to just say thank you for your attendance. And I'm going to uh, turn it back over to you, Liana. Good morning. We have a couple of our city council members in attendance, so we thank you. And I know that we have a couple of individuals from our community that are here. So I just want to say thank you for everybody that came today. And as Mr. Bill was talking, I just thought about how we are playing a part of history. As this is being, being video recorded, I think about the next generation and the future generations, and I think about my children who will be watching this at some point and saying, wow, my mom was also a part of history. I was thinking about how this, the murals that were painted, probably in rural communities, probably in communities where there was disadvantaged children, made art accessible to them. Where Primarily, parents might be able to take their children to museums and art places to see sculptures, maybe travel across the world. Maybe our families don't have that same opportunity, but yet these murals was an opportunity for them to see art in real life, for them to experience and know that they too belong, that there was a part of them. And when they passed by and saw those bright, bright, colorful murals, they thought, man, that is a part of me. That is a part of my culture. And so I was so excited as he was speaking. I said, wow, we are making history today as this is being recorded. And so I have the privilege of introducing the legend, one of the legends that brought, um, he is a legend in the art community. And his inspiring work has you know, brought so much um, feelings to me as I was researching in the last couple of weeks. And I thought about my days at being in the farm labor you know, my parents were farm workers, and I remember the waking up really early in the morning and the sunset sky that you cannot even paint because there is no expression, no painting that can go of that hot heat in the summer as you're pruning probably grapes 
or you're turning the grapes, or in the cold winters when you're wrapping the vines. And if you've ever worked in the fields and you are wrapping a vine and it so happened to snap and it hit you, there is no feeling, there is no portrait, there is nothing that can describe what that feels like. But as I was doing some research and I was walking and looking through all these pictures, it brought me back to life. And as a Madeiran, I am a Madeiran and I love Madeira, I am Madeira proud, um, I thought about some of the mirrors that we have currently and how that is also painting our history for our children. And so I am sure that our great artists have contributed to a small piece of that. So today, I am so excited that we're bringing our culture, our Mexican culture to life, and that uh, I have the privilege, and we have the privilege of hearing a little bit more of Mr. Ezequiel V. Orona. And I'm just gonna read his bio here, just because um, I think it's so inspirational. So it says, Ezequiel V. Orona was born in New Mexico, raised in Madera, California, <laughs> I'm so proud. He married his high school sweetheart in 1966. He would enlist in the United States Army and was one of the 101st Airborne Divisions and served in the Vietnam, November of 1967 to November of 1968. He was wounded in action on his two-year wedding anniversary, July 6, 1968. He would leave, he was truly protected by God. Lee, credits, and is thankful for his high school teacher, art teacher, Mr. Kunzel, and Madera High School for his training in art and his encouragement. See, educators and teachers have a big role to play. And Lee has been an artist all of his life. He attended the Highland University of Las Vegas, New Mexico in 1974 as an art major. He also attended Fresno State. And he started to work in a centro, in a teatro convencino, Centro, centro Valles Arte, in Arte America in the Central Valley, Central uh, San Joaquin Valley. His work includes the convencino mural of Fresno from 1971, which has been demolished, and he has been a full curator of the numerous exhibits and continues to do his art in Las Vegas, Nevada. So today, we have the grand privilege of hearing what was his, his inspiration for his grand work? Mm -hmm. So, I'm proud to turn the mic over to Mr. Isakin Lee Oruna. Yeah, they're on. <laughs> 
We're on. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we decided to kind of like uh, talk together. Yeah, we, we decided to kind of talk together uh, about the mural. And uh, it didn't, I was going to write something down, but it didn't make any sense it, uh, to me. You know, just kind of go up here and wing it. And uh, I mean, uh, I just found out today that uh, the Rasa. Uh, uh, was uh, Ernie kind of cut that out? I always thought it was somebody else, but Ernie, you know, came up with it. Mm -hmm. And Ernie cut the letters out and everything. And, and a friend of ours, uh, he put it up, and I showed up a couple of days later, and there it was, the cross on, you know. And so, uh, so we started doing the doing the mural, and then I started painting, and, and uh, Ernie did the uh, sides, the water on the. On the on the left and the people on the right. I always thought of this. Uh, this is sort of symbolic of Ernie and and his wife uh, Joyce. And uh, I did the center, the, the center. You know the inverted. The inverted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. You guys can hear me okay, right? <laughs> and, and, I read the back of your video. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, anyways. Uh, the, the center uh, was, uh, you know, it's just political. And I see you up here on the, on the top right, uh, you know, on the, with the, has a uh, uh, lock steel around his mouth, you know, which is uh, symbolic of the, uh, you know, priest. You know, we couldn't talk. I mean, we were kind of like prisoners in the, in the land, you know, we were kind of really uh, oppressed, you know. I was at that time when we did this. Uh, we were going pretty much uh, full bore, you know, as far as political and uh, politically and, and socially, you know, being conscious of, of things that were going on around us. <clears throat> and uh, Ernie and I were both with uh, Luis Valdez at the Alto Campesino. And uh, I, I kind of had the privilege of walking from Chow Chile to Madero on that, uh, on, uh, with uh, uh, Senor uh, Chavez. And uh, that really uh, kind of meant uh, very a lot to me, you know. And he was, he was such a, I was kind of thinking about him last night, and, you know, it's kind of like a, our, our own holy man, you know, kind of like, you know, he was, he was kind of like a holy man. I sat across from him one time, and uh, we did a performance in uh, Del Rey, and uh, he was like, uh, it was kind of like an aura about him. Uh, and that was very inspirational to me, and it helped me as as far as my my work uh, doing the art. But uh, it was uh, at that time everything was everybody was just really, you know, really mad. I think uh, most of us were, you had to be mad in order to do something, you know, in order to march. You had to see what was going on, you know, the uh, oppression and the suppression that was that was. Uh, going on and, and you know the racism you know all the stuff that was going on you know that we were fighting against i ran across racism over in nam you know and, and uh, i saw it firsthand and when i got back to the states it was uh you know i got run, run out of a town uh, in uh north carolina you know under the threat of death you know but california when i got out i it came to california got introduced to uh, the, the Chicano movement. And I forgot, I'd forgotten, I wanted to be an artist from high school, but I'd uh, forgotten all about that for that one year I spent over there. So I, I had to kind of come back and try to get back into, uh, into what I had to find out about art again, you know? And that's when I met, uh, uh, you know, the Africa Casino and, and Ernie, you know, and Ernie just kind of like, he kind of invited me to do that China, the Chinatown mural, and I started painting again. And then from the Chinatown mural, we came to, we wound up over here in Madera. I wanted to do one here. And uh, we just happened to be like, uh, I just happened to see, so we were walking around for a building. We were going down the assembly, right? And I turned around like this, and there was this big old white, big old white wall, and I'm going, that's perfect, you know? So, it, so I tell Ernie, and so the wheels started turning, and uh, 
initially, though, I was telling uh, Philip last night that if it hadn't been for uh, the manager of the theater, Mr. Benny Walker, he kind of, you know, there was a group of us in his band, and, and we, we got the idea, right? We got the flash, and we went to the theater, and we talked to him, we asked to talk to him, and he let us into the, went to his office, and we just kind of like, I just blurted out what we wanted to do, you know, the idea and stuff, and he says, great, you know, so he, he got up to, uh, to meet us. And uh, so his response was positive. It was immediate. And, uh, and then, we, you know, it just, it went from there. We, we had to get permission. We got the, and he got the okay from the owners of the buildings. And then uh, we started doing the, uh, we had to do that planning commission thing, you know. It was just to get a commit, you know, but it got a little contentious there, you know, for a minute. And, but it, if it hadn't been for the the people of, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but there are, and a big bottle of tea with uh, <laughs> and times. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of get emotional because, you know, the you know, I, love, I love my little town, you know, uh, care about it. Uh, what was contentious about it? What did you I'm have sorry? to fight against? Uh, well, you know, the, the, uh, some comments that were made by the planning commission, some of the commissioners, you know, one of them, I think it was, uh, there's a Peach Sports Shop, I think, the, I forgot his name, uh, the owner, he was on the planning commission, and uh, he uh, said something about diesel and something else that anything could burn, you know. Well, I think they didn't like the, 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 Z, the C, how could we turn into a C, according to them? And if I did that, then the whole thing would not mean anything. So, uh, uh, so uh, that was the whole thing. They they didn't like the word uh, rasa. Mm -hmm. Rasa was a, I can say maybe some of them never heard about. But rasa is really the day that we're going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo next week. And all over the continent. Everything shuts down and they celebrate that day. But uh, a raza was something that the Spaniards uh, coined when they saw the soldiers uh, mixing with the Native Americans uh, from the continent and therefore created an, a new race of people uh, through immigration. So, uh, so that's something that has been a, always a mystery in this country, the fact that uh, Spanish is considered uh, a Spanish uh, uh, informal language. Maybe not so much anymore, but uh, in my time, uh, it was, you, you weren't permitted to speak Spanish in, in, in schools. Uh, so uh, so that was the, the whole thing. And then some guy came up to me and said, uh, who smelled like he had been drinking. <laughs> and he said something about the, 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 the Z. And I thought, well, you know, this. And so that was the whole, reason for going negative on it uh, by not permitting a uh, permit to put the scaffold on the uh, building and without the scaffold i guess so uh, it, it couldn't have been done so uh, at that point i just thought well uh w what happens now do i have to spend some money now uh, hiring some lawyers to get this cleared up or understand what's going on here and so that's when the cr rla stepped in and they you know, went with me to uh, the uh, city hall here in Madera and, uh, and they had to write up a permit to put the scaffold up. And so uh, after that, uh, we, we got started, but that, that almost took a year just to get the uh, permission to do that. And, uh, and Lee was the one who picked out the wall, not me. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, this is something overwhelming, the, the scale of it. And I, I just want to mention something too about since he showed the uh, three studies of, of the murals, the one in Delray was actually a, a backdrop for uh, uh, for the uh, teatro, uh, and uh, and it was not uh, a, a showpiece uh, type of uh, art, so it was done only as a uh, backdrop for the teatro. But I couldn't see myself doing that. Uh, on the mural on Tulerinef with uh, people uh, uh, showing rifles and all that. It was just, uh, I just saw it was uh, something that I thought about and uh, made the decision to do something about the, the Huelga Eagle, which was a symbol that the uh, 
farm workers were using because that corner was used to pick up uh, farm workers and uh, they used to park big buses there and they would go to load up for a drink of wine you know to go out and and, uh, and do the field work so uh, and then uh, later on I found out that that was a notorious uh, heroin corner in West Fresno and so I just thought well one of my students said well how come you didn't do something at Fashion Fair and I just thought well, Get out of here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, that's not, uh, that's not, I'm not, if you don't understand this, uh, I'm going to have you write a term paper about all this business. Uh, so, uh, so that's, uh, that's what it was. Uh, I mean, that's how it started. Uh, and when I did that, then of course, uh, we, uh, Lou came and, and uh, asked about, if, uh, picked out this wall, and I never thought that I would get into a, a pickle with the, the city hall here in, in Madero and and all the hassle that we had to get the actually again but there was over a thousand petitions so the jar of nickels and dimes didn't mean anything the petitions were the ones that were the most important to make this happen and at that time I thought well it's it's, it's now or never you do this with Lee or without Lee but it's gonna happen and and we made it happen the, the four squares uh, represent the uh, Rasa R A Z A, and the R A is what I did to frame uh, Lee's study, and I gave Lee the center because I thought he deserved the, the focus of this entire uh, piece. Whereas on, on the mural in uh, Fresno, I did the center, which was the wedding I knew, and the farm workers, and then the images of the. Uh, but to both of us, uh, it was a new beginning of. Uh, Ideas. I have seen murals, I mean, in Sacramento, and I, mean, I have seen the one that uh, Antonio Bernal did, and I think that's what uh, kind of really fired me up for, 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 make, uh, for going out there and facing, uh, you know, uh, Tulare and F, which is really a weird corner to be in. And all that time, because you can hear music from Santana coming out of the bar there in the corner, so uh, uh, lots of things were happening with them at the moment. And that uh, mural got more exposure in books with uh, Jacinto Pirata uh, making that, along with some other pieces that I had done in a, a film that I produced back in the 60s. But the mural in Madera was not, uh, didn't get that kind of, uh, you know, uh, exposure. But uh, as I can see this now, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a dream come true because it was it was about Lee. I could have never done any of this without Lee. Even though he, he was a veteran, uh, Vietnam veteran, uh, I could see that uh, he had the, how can I say, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the huevos. <laughs> to make this happen. And so that, that's what it is. It takes somebody like this man here to make it happen. And to this point, uh, to this time, I think he has the right idea for this kind of environment, for the, uh, for what he does. So it, it's not a, a moment anymore of, 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 of taking a spray can and spraying uh, on the wall. It's, it's a moment for going on to uh, the classic ideas of medium and, and art, uh, which include uh, doing things with browns, uh, uh, mosaics, and all the things that, you know, they're a part of making art. So art belongs to everybody. It, it's not just for a special person, it belongs to all of us. And so it, it, it has to have the, um, how can I say, the, the class, uh, the material uh, to make that appear as a, as a classic uh, piece of history and of art. Okay. I was just going to say that, um, you know, we always went into wherever we were at, you know, together. We've always done exhibits together. With, we've always been, um, and this is a little bit around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we, we, we've always, uh, you know, all the organizations that we were with, Ernie and I, and individually, uh, you know, doing exhibitions, uh, group exhibitions. We always did group exhibitions. We had, there was always, uh, we, there were always other artists involved in what we did. 
and there was always a theme. You know, we always uh, we would talk about something like, say, maybe something was going on, something happened, you know, something social, political that, that needed some attention. And we would pick something out and we'd say, hey, man, we, let's do something. Let's do something about this, you know. So we'd get together and, and get, get the space. And uh, we had the space to do these shows. So we always uh, did, you know, we always worked together. And it was always for the community. It was always about the people. You know, it was always art for the people. You know, it was never, every once in a while, we do something a little bit of selfish, you know, like uh, maybe a two man show or something, and we'd show our stuff. And uh, that was cool, but it's not really what Ernie and I uh, and the rest of us, you know, uh, our friends, you know, fellow artists, you know, that, uh, yeah, that, you know, we, we always hung together. We were always together. We always pushed together. You know, we always, uh, Pushed the art together, and you know the Chicano art. It was just we were Chicanos, and we had this. You know, there was so much energy there that it just kind of carried the whole thing. You know, it carried, it carried, it carried us through. Uh, well, it was actually uh, the beginning of seventy. Uh, they fired all the people that were uh, teaching uh, Russell studies at uh, Fresno State, and I had just come in from uh, Denver, uh, from Colorado. Uh, because I couldn't make it there uh, on uh, what I was, I was about to get a job there, and I thought I don't want to get a job in this place. I'd rather be in California, and maybe I'll have a chance in Fresno, and be with the with the with the with the, with the homeboys again. <laughs> so I I did come back, and that's when uh, Fresno State was upside down, and uh, and Luis, of course, was the uh, man behind all of this. Uh, not responsible for the problems that the federal state was having, but trying to kind of help change the mode, the mood of uh, what was going on on the campus. And so, uh, so they picked out. Uh, there were three candidates uh, for the position, and these uh, two candidates have just had a BA, uh, and, uh, uh, but they would have probably preferred a, a PhD in, in social science. And, uh, and 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 uh, Luis uh, brought my name up and and said, well, here's uh, somebody who's got a master's, uh, but uh, it's in art. And so uh, when I and so they sent a telegram to my house, and the telegram said, uh, you know, please come to our office and, and we will talk about a, a position for you. And so when I talked to the, the dean there, uh, he said, well, you can't. I said, Ernie, what would you like to teach? He said, well, I just want to teach art. That's all I know. I don't know anything else. But, uh, but uh, I can remember that he said, well, you can't teach art. You have to teach uh, Chicago art. And that's when I thought, well, uh, the, my boat has finally come in. <laughs> I finally have, have been in the right place at the right time. Because I had done a lot of stuff before that. Uh, that, would, that I couldn't get anywhere with it. I've done films and shows and books and and still, uh, you know, no, no, nothing like being hired. And so that's when, uh, that's how it started. And uh, and that's when I met Lee with a teatro who was working there and, and started uh, uh, thinking about painting on walls and trying to make something happen like that. So. Uh, so a lot of things uh, changed just with the fact that they took a chance and hired somebody like me. Because I don't think that place would probably uh, not even be there at this point if they hadn't done that. So it was almost like uh, they knew what they were doing. They, they knew that the only chance they had of, of recovering from where they were at was to find uh, somebody who could create some ideas uh, to begin a new phase of uh, education or exposure. And so, uh, because I, I grew up in prison, so all my life I've, you know, I've, I've gone through this. I've had interviews there ever since I was 18, 19, and, and had shows and all that. And, and since my teacher once told me, you know, you know you're going to have trouble with these two fathers. I hope the best of luck for you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, so that's what it was. You know, I, I can understand that. And, 
so well. And that's where it is. But this moment now uh, represents maybe a moment of struggle that uh, we've all gone through uh, for the change. And uh, uh, that's what the older used to say. The only chance you're going to have is to have an education to get out of poverty. And so that's uh, what it was. And, uh, and, and uh, but uh, the chance of getting an education was expensive too. So, uh, uh, so you couldn't really, uh, you know, how you were going to do that. You had to have the connections to it. Have people help you understand uh, how, how you would go through that mire of uh, obstacles that were there, you know, to uh, pass the classes and all that. So, uh, uh, so I remember coming home and, and I told my father, Well, I don't think we have maestria. He said, You want to do this? And I thought to myself, Well, I didn't think about that. I've been living up with just lunches that I get from lockers. And washing dishes, and mopping floors, and all that. And I never thought about uh, borrowing money to go into a, a dormitory or so on. But then, uh, once I got that, I had to. They wouldn't give uh, they wouldn't give loans to art majors, but it was and so on. And and it was very difficult for me to find people who would hire me just on the kind of stuff that I was doing in my work, so on. So I had to kind of. But wait for that moment to meet uh, somebody like me, Carl Nevis, and somebody like me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to see, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Philip uh, for putting this together. Mm -hmm. Philip, thank you okay. uh, okay. From, uh, from both of us. You know, we appreciate it. And uh, we kind of forgot about it. You know, it, it kind of suddenly happened. We hit that uh, COVID blip in February or whatever it was. And, and I kind of just put everything in the back in the in, in the back uh, back burner, you know. But then all of a sudden, here we are, you know. And it, and it happened. And uh, uh, I want to say uh, I want to thank uh, Ernie. I've got I always tell Ernie this. I go, I've got two friends that I trust and, and care about more than anybody else, you know. That he's one of them. Another guy's over in Corcoran, and his name's uh, Monty Bar. Yeah, we uh, cast bronze together over at Fresno State. And, you know, a true friend, uh, never have this guy here, you know, something else. He's inspired me, and he's inspired a lot of students. And But uh, most importantly, he's been my friend. Uh, just somebody that I can go to for anything at any time, you know. So, uh, thank you. I guess that's Bill from winding up here.
Introducing uh, one of our guests. Yes, I do have the privilege of introducing our senator here. I want to share a couple of words before she comes up because uh, she is a woman with many, many firsts. And um, I have my dear friend, Soy, who happens to be a part of her uh, staff. And she she just couldn't stop ranting and raving and she said juliana I hope you understand when you introduce her make sure you do justice she is a woman of my birth and i read on here it says not only was she the first female elected uh mayor back in the uh, city of salinas but she was also the first latina elected to represent the 28th assembly of the district back in 2006 and um her biography, her title, the many things she has done in our community, I mean, we could be here for hours. <laughs> but I do want to say thank you for all the great work that you have done for paving the way for Latinas, for women, all along the Central Valley and all of our community. And let me tell you, we do look up to you. We admire you, and we thank you for the work that you are doing. And we hope that one day, we will continue in your path. So thank you so much. So I have the grand privilege of uh, introducing Senator Ana Caballero, Senate District 12. Well, thank you so much for that great introduction. I'll have to tell so you, you did me justice. <laughs> it made it very nice. Um, let me just say, the, the, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. This is. Um, it's wonderful hearing from the artists. I, I just um, felt very emotional along with them to hear. Um, you had to listen carefully to hear the pain. And I think that's the, the reason we celebrate our history is to understand the pain and not to forget so that we can um, inspire future students um, to get involved and to be active and to do good things for, for our community. Like, Brianna said, she has to be asked periodically, what are you doing for the community? Because we need to be reminded of it sometimes. Um, first, let me thank Phil for the opportunity to be here uh, and to advocate for this long overdue recognition. I was really disappointed to find out that we were going to celebrate a mural that no longer existed. Because there's nothing sadder than to have it gone. But it is important to recognize the work that went in to this amazing mural and to understand that it, it created controversy here in the community. And it created controversy because um, for, for, for Latinos, you know that um, there is prejudice in the community and that, that sometimes people don't understand some of the struggles um, that families have gone through. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, you, you see it, you hear it, and you move on. Mm -hmm. You move on. But if, if you don't capture kind of where we came from and why it's important and what it means to our community, then um, we, don't, we don't have a shared value. We don't, we don't get to talk about it. We don't get to see it. The reason, uh, the reason I asked what the controversy was about is that, um, is that sometimes it's real simple things. Like people don't understand what Glasgow means. Mm -hmm and what it means historically, and why it's important. Because Mexicans are the results. Have, have 
U.S. has a very different history than the United States does in regards to its history. particularly in California, which is why there's so much controversy over celebrating uh, Columbus Day or uh, the missionaries. Uh, there was some brutality against the Native Americans. In Mexico, there was the same brutality, but out of that brutality, because women were raped, I mean, there were men that came over, and it was those Span Spaniards and other European um, uh, countries, like Portugal and Italy, um, it was the rape of, of women that created the uh, mestizos, and most of us from Mexico have uh, a lot of mestizo blood, blood in us. And if you if you do your DNA, you see that you have native blood as well as Spaniard or um, some other European uh, blood. And so, um, so that that relationship with color, the relationship with um, how pure your blood was, the relationship with how poor your family was, um, what, when you immigrated to California, um, all of that plays a really important part in terms of our history and, and uh, how we relate to, um, to our communities and to, to each other in many ways as well. Um, I think it's, it's pretty, um, pretty universal to say that we all came here for a better life. Um, or our families came here for a better life, and they came here um, looking for, for for something. Some of them uh, for a better life for themselves, but some of them for a dream that they that they had. And um, the ability to actually put it in a mural and to, to to have the mural be controversial so that it challenges us to talk about it and challenges us to understand. But one of the things I really love about the mural, although it's too bad we can't see it very well, is that, is that there are symbols there. And if you don't understand what the symbols are, then it makes you want to study. And um, I was really happy to hear about the, the, um, the work that was done by Ernesto Palomino at Fresno State, because I didn't meet a Latino teacher until I got to college. I didn't see anybody that looked like me when I was growing up as a kid as an educator. And, um, and my parents, much like, like theirs, told them you have to get an education because it's the way, um, it's a way to guarantee that you can take care of yourself and feed yourself. And the, and the fact that he got the job just at the time that they wanted a Latino, and we call it Latino now, right? At the time, we were Chicanos. And it was a proud statement to say, um, I'm Chicana, and I call myself Chicana. But, but to, to have them say, no, we don't want you to teach her, we want you to teach Chicano art, is, is phenomenal because it is, it is a, it, it solidifies the fact that what he was doing was important. And he was the beacon for young students coming in saying, I need to learn a little bit about my history, I need to know about my family and where uh, Chicanos come from, and why is it important to be, why is it important to contribute to the community, and through art you can do that. That's, that's the beauty of, of doing this. So, um, so I'm really happy to be here today to recognize the contributions to this really incredibly important project. Um, and I, I, I also want to um, want to uh, make sure I don't forget that I came here to do business, not just to talk. <laughs> they put me to work. Um, I have two certificates of recognition that that I would uh, like to present. First to Ernesto Ramirez Palomino for his work as a Chicano artist and also for the production of the Madera Raza Mural project. And I also have a certificate of recognition for so if you both could come up here, I'd like to
also know that one of the reasons that I ended up in rural California um, and then I went to law school is because of the formal group. Mm -hmm. I was inspired by um, Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez, and, um, and I decided I wanted to be able to help people make good decisions for themselves. And sometimes if you don't have an attorney to talk to, it's very difficult to know what, are, what should they do? What are my legal rights, right? And so um, I'm here today because of that movement. And um, and I think what they did for, for Chicanos at, uh, at the time, because all of the things you were talking about hit me right here, is that, um, is that we learned about ourselves. Yeah. And in learning about ourselves, it gave us a sense of pride. And gave us the ability to get out there and say, oh, God, that's a So, si se puede, that's right. So, on behalf of the California State Senate, it gives me great pleasure to present to each one of you this certificate of recognition from the California State Senate. resolution from the legislature um, and this is a, re uh, a resolution recognizing the Madera mural project as a really important cultural event for the um, Madera and you know what I think I'm going to give this to the mayor because this I think this should sit in City Hall yeah. you know what I mean? yeah. Whatever the, the the hard part of trying to get a permit from from uh, the city was, um, that was a really important mural project for the city. It, it established Madera as um, a really important cultural center for Latino art. So, on behalf of the legislature, it gives me great pleasure to present this to Mayor Santos Garcia. Yes. members from the city of here? Come here, brother. <laughs> so we have Council Member Stephen Montes, Council Member Artemio Villegas, and then my Thank you. Yeah. 
of things that happened. I left Fresno State because I was impatient. I was a young man. I was burning with desire to make things happen. I joined the Universidad de Aslan, which is an alternative university for, Latino, for Latinos and Chicanos here in Fresno. There was, after that, a more to Colegio La Tierra, where I joined the staff as a teacher, not a student. I would teach GED and ESL. So anyway, long story short, the inspiration of many, many, many people who came before us inspired us to step up and become a senator in the, in, in California legislature, become city council members and govern our city, make everything happen for a betterment of our community. And then you have a man who used to be great to be miles from city, from city hall, and he's a mayor. So with that, Bernie says you gave me the app, you're coming up first. <laughs> you, both of you actually, if you could come up. Al mismo tiempo, por favor. In recognition of your historic contribution to the city of Madera, the Madera Raza Mural, presented this 30th day of April 2022. Wow. And this also is a mayor certificate presented to Ernesto Palomino Chicano Muralist. In recognition of your historic contribution to the city of Madera, the Madera Raza Mural, presented to you this 30th day of April. 2022. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
uh, when the building was already demolished in 1997, I realized, hmm, I truly made a big mistake. I missed an important opportunity by not taking photographs, not doing your research and documentation. Well, the public well, the mural was still part of their public art. Um, while I was teaching a critical thinking class at Fresno State, which found studies, I decided that I needed to research, document, and try to provide an important historical perspective related to the mural. In 2013, I began my research by attending a Latina Sunitas meeting. Uh, this organization consisted of many women that were active in the community, the city of Madera. The result of that meeting would be a communication from Matilda Torres. Matilda and I were very good friends. Matilda is a distinguished educator uh, that I worked with while working here at the Madera Center. And Matilda directed me to the names of Ernesto Palomino and Ezequiel de Um Since I knew Ernesto uh, through my involvement uh, as a member of the Board of Directors of Arte Medica, I arranged the interview that happened in 2014. Additionally, I was able to contact Jim Tabor uh, with the Madero Redevelopment Agency, and Jim was very helpful, and as I mentioned, allowed me access to um, large folders of information that actually was a place to work. Uh, continuing the research and the documentation took me to the Madero Tribune, where I was welcomed to provide, provide with a large workspace and uh, the ability to photograph the articles. And then my journey would uh, take me to a uh, news video, which we uh, unfortunately weren't able to get working today. Um, once I felt I had sufficient documentation, I then contacted Dr. Helena uh, here at Madera Community College and about the possibility of doing this presentation. This was a couple of years ago, right before COVID. Um, and I was up with a very positive yes. Uh, I contacted Senator Ana Caballero's office and uh, again, them about being part of this presentation and again was uh, provided with great support so thank you very much um, in, in your program there's an ex excerpt of, of an essay titled the anthropology and sociology of mexican americans a distortion of mexican american history written by octavio nacho Romano de Finn. i placed it in your program because uh, a, a brief summary of that message that i received when i read that essay when i was attending Cal State Long Beach, um, and taking my first Chicago Studies course, this is one of the first essays that, that we were given. And uh, this essay has been the driving force because it talks about being a historical and not having your history. And I think we've seen today from, from uh, many of the testimonies that it's important to have history, to have pride, to have cultural identity. And so um, that essay has been the driving force for me while I was doing this research. And it's been the continued driving force uh, in related to doing the Morales and Mitio research, which actually has taken a different uh, a different turn at UC Riverside. I was down there last weekend doing again some additional uh, research work with uh, one of the psychologists there is doing uh, related research. So I'm, I'm very thankful. So I, I leave you with the intended purpose um, to honor and recognize Ernesto Palomino, Ezequiel Di Arona, Chicano artist muralists, and they were truly the vanguards of Chicano, of Chicano movement and American history. To recognize the impact, the significance of the Madera Raza mural, and it's important as art in a public space. To write our own history about the Madera Raza mural and its impact. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for, for making this success, and thank you for your, your attention today. Um, there, there are two large uh, reproductions of the mural. You're welcome to take photographs of those, selfies, pictures in front of the mural. Uh, it'd be easier to maybe appear unless you're real tall. Um, but you're, those are the reproductions. One's going to stay here at the college, and the other is going to go to City Hall someplace. Uh, please enjoy the refreshments uh, that are over here. Uh, they are courtesy of the Association of Mexican American Educators, the Madera chapter. They provided us with uh, funding for that, so I thank them very much for being here and being a part of this. And I just say, I want to thank you for attending.
Mayor Santos, please. Um, we'd like to present you with uh, the picture, and it's been autographed by both of the artists. Thank you. And it has been signed by both of them, and with, they were very glad to sign it. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. And uh, on behalf of, this is for uh, Madera Community College. So, Michelle, are you here still? Yeah, she's <laughs> not here. She's Okay, I know I have a couple of interesting here. Okay, she's here. Jeff, you want to accept this on behalf of Dr. Oh, Bader? Oh, <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was making sure the food was prepared. <laughs> Picture, and uh, it's been signed by both the artists. Wow, thank you very much. So, again, I, I can't thank you enough. This, this exceeded all expectations. So thank you for being here, and please enjoy the, the um, freshness and the food that appeared in the other thing for the department. I appreciate it very, very much. Maybe you should get a picture of you guys at the mural. Thank you so much. Oh, can I? My notes because I left them up here. Superintendent. <laughs> 